All right, welcome everyone to this video on electrochemistry. We're going to be talking about the relationship between Gibbs free energy and your self potential and the Nernst equation. So, right, we talked about in thermal chemistry, Gibbs free energy, and the fact that when delta G for your reaction is less than zero, right, that's a G, right, is less than zero, that is a spontaneous reaction, right? Um, okay. And Gibbs free energy is related with the self potential of an electrochemical reaction via this equation. Okay. In this equation, delta G is again your Gibbs free energy under standard conditions. N is the number of electrons that's being transferred. F is Faraday's constant, okay, which is just 96485 coulombs per moles of electron. And then E is the standard cell potential for your electrochemical reaction. Okay. And so we see here, right, if delta G is less than zero, that means you have a spontaneous reaction. That means that the cell potential, right, under standard conditions is greater than zero for a spontaneous chemical reaction, okay? And so, right, and so that is our cell potential, right, um, and how the fact that for a galvanic cell, for a spontaneous electrochemical reaction, right, um, you have a positive self potential and a negative free energy, okay? Right. And so then we can kind of think of the different relationships we have, right? We just talked about this relationship between the self potential and Gibbs free energy. In thermodynamics, we talked about the relationship between delta G and the equilibrium constant K. And so using those two relationships, you can show that the standard self potential is related to the equilibrium constant via this equation here. And so all of these things are interrelated, delta G, E naught, and K. So what does that mean? Well, it means, for example, for a spontaneous reaction, delta G has to be less than zero, the um, cell potential has to be greater than zero, and the equilibrium constant is greater than one, right? Because for a spontaneous reaction, you want to be forming products, and if you've got a lot of products, equilibrium constant should be greater than one, okay? And then similarly, for a non-spontaneous reaction, delta G is less than zero, or is greater than zero, sorry. Delta G is greater than zero, your cell potential is less than zero, and then K is less than one, right? But still greater than zero, right? K is always a positive number, right? But if it's less than one, okay, then that means you have some sort of non-spontaneous reaction, right? And you're favoring reactants and not products. Okay. Now, what about if I change, have concentration differences, right? So let's consider right how a cell potential would vary with concentration, right? If I had some cell potential under standard conditions, right? Um, right? If I varied the concentrations, right? We can think of how the shot Lace principle tells us whether or not I'm shifting to reacting to products, right? So if I have some standard cell potential, okay, for some electrochemical reaction under standard conditions, right? I reduce the concentration of one of the say my reactants. The shot Lace principle tells me I'm going to shift to the left and form more reactants, okay, which should lower than my um, cell potential, right? Because as I'm forming more and more reactants, products are being less and less favored, and my cell potential should be going down, okay, in that situation. Okay? And that quantitative relationship is given by the Nernst equation, okay? It's presided here, right? So the cell potential for any electrochemical reaction is like the standard cell potential, right? One molar, one bar system, right? minus RT, R is your ideal gas constant, T is your temperature, divided by NF, right? Where N, again, is the number of electrons transferred, right? Right, N is your number of electrons transferred, right? F is Faraday's constant, right? Which is that uh, 96,485, I believe. Right, and then R again is your ideal gas constant, T is your temperature, okay? And then Q is your reaction quotient, right? Um, right, again, Q is your reaction quotient, right? Same functional form as the equilibrium constant, but at non-equilibrium values, okay? And then if you're at 25 degrees Celsius, okay, this relationship simplifies down to this expression here that the cell potential is equal to the standard cell potential minus 0.591 divided by the number of electrons being transferred times the log of Q, okay? And that is your Nernst equation, okay? Um, and again, that second equation is only at 25 degrees Celsius, 
um, and you do not need to memorize it whatsoever. Okay. So some observations of the Nernst equation, right, is that right as electrons are flowing in the spontaneous direction, right, that is reducing, um, right, let's say you have a spontaneous reaction from reactants to products, right, as electrons are flowing from reactants to products, right, your reaction is proceeding more and more and more and you're forming more and more products and getting rid of more and more reactants, right? Till you get to a point, right, where um, you reach, uh, right, equilibrium and at equilibrium, okay, Q is equal to K and your cell potential is going to equal zero, okay? And this is a dead battery, right? When your battery dies, when you ran out of, of power from your battery, that is because it is your electrochemical reaction within that battery has reached equilibrium and doesn't want to react anymore, right? Once your reaction's reached equilibrium, it's done creating any net amount of reactants or products, okay? And so, right, for rechargeable batteries and things like that, right, you then plug it into some power source and then you provide power to your battery to force products to go back to reactants, right? And then after you've unplugged it, right, you now have then a charged battery where you got a bunch of extra reactants that want to form products and it will then start forming products again and allow flow of, of electricity through that battery, right, to power your device.